welcome to Jujube DIY. I'm Sarah. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you new gingerbread DIYs that I haven't seen anybody doing. So if you want to see what I've created, stay tuned. For our first DIY, we're going to use one of these large felt gingerbread men from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to pull that out. We don't need any of the accessories to go with it, but we are going to need a piece of poster board. This is the foam core poster board, and I'm going to use this gingerbread man as a template. So I am just going to trace around him with a pencil onto that foam core board, and I will transfer the image right onto the foam core and obviously this will give us a little gingerbread man and then i'm just going to use my box knife um, or you know sharp cutter you can use an exacto knife here if you have that um, and i'm just going to cut out our gingerbread man from that foam core board so i'm just going to go in like kind of little areas cut away some of it and instead of just trying to cut it all at once, it makes it a little bit easier to do it in little sections. So you can um, do this however you'd like. You just want to make sure that you get those edges rounded really nicely and that you cut everything out. And then if you need to, you can take a little bit of sandpaper and just smooth out any edges. Um, the foam core board actually sands down really nicely. Next, I'm going to use the uh, apple barrel paint. No, no. This is Waverly chalk paint in hazelnut, and I'm going to paint my gingerbread man front and back with two coats of paint. Next, I'm gonna use some regular poster board. This is the thinner poster board that you can get at the Dollar Tree. It comes in like a package of four sheets, or you can buy the very large um, pieces that are about 50 cents a piece. And you're just going to cut one inch strips. It doesn't matter really how long they are. I am just showing you that one side is kind of shiny here and the other side is a little more matte. So just want to make sure that you glue whatever side you glue down, just that it's either all the shiny side facing one way and the matte side facing the other. And I'm just going to use some wet glue here to attach these strips together. And I'm going to make sure that one side is aligned really well. There's no way you can cut poster board or paper at all to make it all exactly even, but just make sure that one side is um, completely even. And then I was showing you that I got some of those marquee lights. These came from Michaels, but you can get them on Amazon and they come in a package, I think of 14. I don't remember how many it was. I just counted however many there were. And then I am just placing dots onto my gingerbread man where I want those lights to go. And I'm going in about a quarter of an inch. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, you've seen me do these uh, faces for these gingerbread men. So if you wanna skip ahead to the next part of this tutorial, you're more than welcome to. But what I do for my gingerbread faces, for anybody who hasn't been around or is seeing this for the first time, I create a little teardrop for the eyes. And then I paint in about three quarters of the top of that black. And then two little lines underneath, one for the color of the eyes and one for a little bit of white. And then I'm gonna go in and just paint on a mouth. Now I am using a paintbrush here. You can use paint pens if you would like. I really like the uh, Posca paint pens, or you can do like I'm doing, which is just a fine paintbrush. I like the um, Walmart brand, but actually it's not Walmart brand. You can buy them at Walmart. It is the folk art brand of um, fine paintbrushes. <laughs> and um, you just use a little bit of paint. So I'm using like apple barrel paint that I just water down just a touch so that it's more like an ink kind of consistency. And then you can really get in there with fine details in that paint. And then I just make a little uh, oval there for the nose. And now I'm going to go in with some white and I'm going to paint on his little um, icing stripes. <laughs> Like, what is that? It's icing. So I'm just going to paint on those and everything I give about two coats of paint or so. 
So here I am painting the bottom of the eye and this is just white and then I add a little bit of shine to the black part and then I go in with a red paint for the nose. Um, I am not sure. I think I used the crimson from Waverly. Again, just watered that down so that it is a thinner consistency and is easier to paint with. And so I'll paint his nose and his little tongue there with the red color. It's so cute. Next, we're going to go in and do the cheeks. And I just prefer a light pink color for this. I think this is probably Ballet Slipper from Waverly, this light, light pink color. But any light pink color or whatever color you want the cheeks to be will do great. And then I'm gonna go in with the eye color right there in between the black and the white. And I am using a very vibrant blue. I think that that is a really cute contrast for these little gingerbread men. But again, you can create the eye color, whichever color you'd like. So now with that strip that we had glued together before, I had gone in and marked the middle of that strip. And that is just going to make it easier for me to make sure that this strip is lining up perfectly on my gingerbread man. And I'm just going to hot glue this all the way around, making this a you know, border for our gingerbread man. And as you can tell, maybe we are making little gingerbread marquees. I had a um, viewer ask for this tutorial a couple of years ago and just had never gotten around to it. So if you are still watching, here is your tutorial for a gingerbread marquee. I have not seen anybody else doing this uh, type of tutorial. So I'm really excited to share this with you. I think that these turned out so cute and I am so excited to share these with you. And I hope that you guys all have fun making some of these for your own home decor. So again, I am just going to continue hot gluing around the edge. My hot glue gun is just a regular glue gun from, um, I think I picked it up at Walmart and um, yeah, so it's not anything particular. It's not melting the foam or anything like that. And I am just going around the whole edge and I like to use the Gorilla Glue sticks. Um, again, I just picked those up at Walmart and they hold really well, but this is foam core and paper. So it's going to hold really well, no matter what kind of hot glue you use here. Right, so I just continued around with the hot glue until I got back to the beginning and then I left a bit of an overlap and I am going to use a little bit of wet glue here just for that paper overlap um, just so that there's not any bulk and then I'm going to go in with my Waverly chalk paint in hazelnut and I am going to give these um, little bits of paper, a couple of coats on each side. Now you might notice as you're painting both the foam core board and this poster board that it kind of starts to bow and looks a little funky while it's wet, but as it dries, as long as you have the same coat number on both sides, it will even out. And um, I was kind of paying attention to that as I was going because I was a little concerned at first because it was bowing, but as it dried, it flattened right out. So now I'm gonna use these marquee lights. I got these from Michaels, but you can get them on Amazon if you can't find them at Michaels. And there is instructions on how to use these. I am going to use this little stick to poke through on those um, marks that I made earlier. And that's why I kind of pre-marked this so that I could make sure that my lights were where I want them. And it is very easy to use. You just use this little dowel, poke through the hole. And then you're going to take those little marquee bulbs um, and you're just going to place those right into the holes. Then you're going to take your lights and you're going to put the lights into the marquee light bulbs. And these little light bulbs are plastic, so they're, um, you know, not 
going to break on you or anything like that. And these are super cute and really easy to use. I was pretty impressed with them. If you didn't really want to spend the money on these marquee lights, you could definitely just do light bulbs for this and kind of get the same look um, with like Dollar Tree lights if you wanted to. I do wish that these came in a soft white color, but instead it's it's a pretty bright light, like a daylight kind of color, or you can get multicolored. So I am just taping down the cords in the back. I just want to be able to take these cords off, or take these light bulbs off and use them for other projects throughout the year. So I feel like the price on these, which is like, I don't know, like seven bucks or something is worth it. So now I'm going to decorate my little gingerbread man here. Um, I am just using some of these large buttons that I picked up at Walmart. And then I'm going to make a little bow tie for this one. I did make two of these and this ribbon came from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna add a little bow tie there. And then for the other one, I wanted to kind of make a little girl. So I just did a, a boy and a girl, gingerbread man and girl, whatever. <laughs> and so for her, I'm just gonna add a little bow to her hair and I'm just gonna dovetail those ends just to make it a little more feminine and cute and then i'll just put that right in her hair and look at how cute these turned out they are so festive and so fun on my shelf and when they're all lit up at nighttime they are so adorable so for this next diy we're going to start off with this hippo transfer paper for dark fabric i just printed off some little gingerbread houses that i got off of creative fabrica i will link those down below along with um a little trial if you haven't tried uh, creative fabrica and want to give it a try for free there is a little link there and you can give it a try i love creative fabrica i actually have used creative fabrica exclusively instead of um like using cricut um and stuff so i love that there are svgs i love that there are jpegs that you can use for projects like this and there's all kinds of templates for all kinds of other things so if you want to check out creative fabrica i will link that down below or i will just link this little um set of gingerbread houses that you can go and purchase from creative fabrica so what I did is I printed those out on my computer and now I am just going to fussy cut around them. That's basically just cutting the shape out kind of close. I am leaving a little bit of a white space bubble around it and look at how cute that is. So as it is not like once you heat it up, that color gets darker. So don't be alarmed if you use this and you're like, wow, the color is just so light. Once you heat it up, it does darken. So I'm gonna use one of these burlap pennant banners from the Dollar Tree. And I am going to actually use five of them instead of the six that it comes with. And I am just gonna start off by peeling back that top layer. And all you do is you place that down onto your fabric and then you add the little bit of the have like a piece of wax paper in there or like parchment paper and then you just use your iron and you iron that down onto your fabric and I wasn't sure if this was going to work on the burlap but it worked beautifully on the burlap so I was really happy with that and then once I got all my houses added I am just going to add some puff paint decoration around each of the banners and I changed up that little shape so on this one I have a little heart I did do the swirls all the same, but the shape that I added on the banners were just a little bit different for a couple of them. So I think I did snowflake on one and just a little uh, circle on another. And you'll be able to see that when I show you the uh, final project. But as you can see, I'm just decorating these. You can decorate these any way you'd like. And now I have some 25 millimeter wood beads that I painted in the hazelnut color and then added some white polka dots. And now I'm showing you this bead threader. These are amazing if you haven't tried these and you like to do garlands or anything where you're gonna be uh, doing some beads, you can just put all of your beads on. And now watch this, I'm gonna put the twine through. 
And now I can easily thread all of those beads right on to my twine and it saves so much time and energy. I just love the bead threader. And so because I was, I pulled this banner apart because I wanted to add those beads. So I needed to kind of restring the banner part and I just used a large darning needle to push that twine back through. And as you can see, here are the banners with all of the decorations on it. And I think that this turned out so cute. I love the burlap and kind of that, you know, feel of gingerbread on this burlap. I think it's just too cute. For this DIY, I'm going to use these gingerbread men from the Dollar Tree in the coat of the Waverly chalk paint in hazelnut and then did some decoration on them. And then I have these wood circles that I got from Michaels. They are about an inch and a half wide. I painted them white, added some swirls, and then painted those in with red. Next, I'm gonna add some of this glitter uh, glue stuff on the top. It's like, I don't know, it's extreme glitter from folk art. And I'm going to paint the gingerbread men and my little peppermints all this color. Now I have these little stars I got from Timu. They came in quite a different, like a variety of sizes. And I am going to paint those red and then add some little white polka dots onto them. And then I will coat those with that glitter as well. So everything is glittered. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna take a Dollar Tree, a Dollar Tree tree, <laughs> a Dollar Tree Christmas tree. I gave that a coat of the hazelnut color. And now I'm just going in with a paint pen and doing some dash and dots around the whole tree just for some added decoration and i'm going to go around the whole entire tree and then when i got to the bottom there i just wanted to add a little something to the trunk so i did some little rectangles and i'm going to go in with a uh, stylus and some red paint and i'm just going to add some little red dots to the middle of those rectangles so it's just I just wanted to add a little something extra to the trunk of the tree just to kind of separate it a little bit. And I think it turned out pretty cute. Next, we're going to take our gingerbread men and we are going to line up, I think five of them down at the very bottom. You can line these up however you'd like. I wanted to give a little bit of space so I think I did five and I'm just going to use a little bit of wood glue here and hot glue so that these are nice and secure. And I am using the wood glue that I get from the Dollar Tree. And that's the um, super glue wood glue. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I'm just going to start off by putting um, one right in the middle and that's just kind of that way I can line them up easier on each side and I'm just eyeballing this you can measure this all out and make it perfect if you'd like I am NOT one of those people generally and so I just kind of put them in however I think my eye is happy with and you're more than welcome to do that too and like I said, I was kind of playing around with this a little bit beforehand to see how I liked it. And I did decide on five at the very bottom. And then we're going to add um, a couple of the peppermints. And I decided that three and this kind of next row was perfect here. And um, I'm just going to... What I end up doing is just placing everything first and then going through and gluing them down. So I would recommend that. Um, I don't really show that because I don't think you guys probably want to see that, but I did kind of line everything up, put it on there first, and then I glued everything down that same way with the wig glue and the hot glue just to make sure that it um, is nice and sticky and doesn't... Um, go anywhere over time so now i've got a little star this is one of the wood stars from the dollar tree and i am going to glue that to the top of my tree and that is just going to give extra decoration for the top and it's going to cover up that hole where the string is for the christmas tree 
and again just using that wood glue hot glue combo and I'm sorry that this is out of frame but you'll see in just a second that it is just you know right there at the top of the tree and it looks super cute and is perfect there you can see it and here is how everything glued down looks and I just kind of did you know a graduation of the gingerbread men and the you know peppermint so you know now I'm going to add a little these little stars in different places around just adding some filler and that little thing that I'm using is just a pen it's like a retractable pen with a bit of dental um, wax on the end of it and you just kind of put that wax down there and then you can pick up little things with it they actually have like gem sticks i think this is what they call it for like card making that's the same kind of concept but you know i figured my daughter's got braces she's got that ortho wax dental wax all over the place and so i just stole one of her little um, containers of it and I just put it on the end of a pen and it works just as well and it's a little bit cheaper. So I think the dental wax from Walmart is like less than $2 and I have pens lying all over the place. So now I'm gonna add some tumbling tower blocks. I did three of these um, connected together and then I'm just going to put that onto my, the back of my tree and that way it will stand up. And here it is on display. For this next DIY, we're gonna use one of these wood rounds from the Crafter Square section. It came with a hanger in it. I filled that up with some um, spackle and then just painted over that with the red. And then I added those uh, peppermint stripes. And um, now I'm just gonna paint those in. I had used this, actually, I had used this round for another project. So you'll see that like, dent in the middle of it um that isn't anything other than it is from that other project and so you won't have that like weird circle in the middle of yours it's just because it was from another project so i'm going to paint these um little swirls and i would suggest if you're going to do this project to paint the white first and then go in with your red stripes. Um, it would just make it a lot easier to cover up, but because this wood round was already red, I just went with it this way. And I did make sure that I continued those little stripes down along the side since, it's, since this is a thicker piece of wood, I wanted those stripes to continue down on the side. And as you can see, I'm just taking my time. I just go really slow. And like I've said before, using a little bit of watered down paint makes painting these details so much easier. Yes, you have to go over it a couple of times, but it does make it a lot easier to add these details um, without making it clumpy or weird. So anyhow, that's just my tip. And I'm just gonna continue to paint out these little candy cane stripes. And as you can see, they're just little stripes that are curved. So it's really simple uh, to make these little candy cane or candy swirled pieces. <laughs> um, these peppermint candies, that's what I'm trying to say. Whew, my brain is not working so good today, I think. I hope you guys are all ready for Christmas, um, and I hope that your season is wonderful so far. I want to take just a minute to say thank you so much for all of your support throughout this year. You guys have been wonderful. You've been so understanding with all of my daughter's medical issues and um, my taking time off from this YouTube channel um, and still being there for me when I come back. I appreciate you guys so very much. All right, so now we're gonna turn this into a little stand. And so I'm gonna take four more of those little gingerbread men that I had painted before, and I am going to glue them on to the bottom of my little peppermint here uh, to their heads. <laughs> so I'm just going to glue one on and then just kind of go across from it, glue another one on, 
and yeah so i'm going to glue four of these on you could glue you know six of them or however many you want to put on um and i am just going to use hot glue here i will reinforce them on the back and then i will paint the backs of these with just that hazelnut color just to make it blend in and not be so weird but here is a look at how this little stand turns out i think it is super adorable and i love it Okay, so our next DIY, I'm going to use one of these trays from the Dollar Tree. This is like their little metal trays. I think they come in this rectangle and an oval. I just gave it a quick sand and then painted it with the Waverly chalk paint in the color steel. And then I got some of the wood pieces from the Dollar Tree and I just decorated them up to look like cookies. I did use some of the little peppermint candies that I have in my stash and i am going to use some of that um, fix all adhesive because this is metal and the hot glue will not work quite as well so i will use the fix all and i do end up putting a little spatula there with a little cookie on it and now i'm going in with the waverly chalk paint in elephant and a chippy brush and i am just grunging up this cookie sheet a little bit it was a last minute decision so i would definitely do the grunging up before you put the cookies on it would make things a lot easier for you if you like this look um, i just kind of didn't think about it until after I had already started the project but this project is super simple and is so cute on display in my kitchen all right this next project is a goodwill find however you can get a little gingerbread man that is thick like this from 24 hour crafts I'm just going to pick out a stencil that I like and I'm going to use certain parts of this stencil so I painted the gingerbread man in the hazelnut color and then I am going to tape down this stencil and using a makeup, a bit of makeup sponge in my paint I'm going to dab this on to my gingerbread man um, and I just do light layers that just helps me be able to keep it from bleeding too much it does make the process a little bit longer but in the long run I don't have a whole lot of bleeding if you wanted to you could add a um, bit of adhesive on the back of your stencil to help keep it from bleeding or there are a number of different ways to use stencils to avoid that bleed um, if you do have any bleeding, just go in with a little bit of paint and a fine paintbrush and just fix up any of those areas that um, bled a little bit. And it's pretty easy. Usually it's just one or two coats of paint. And that is all there is to this little project. It is a candle holder, so I could add a candle to it. But I think that this is just kind of an elegant way to do a gingerbread. And I just stuffed him right into a centerpiece there. For our last DIY, we're going to use one of these shelf setters that looks like a rolling pin. These came out at the Dollar Tree in the fall, and I am just using my heat tool there to soften the glue up so that I can get that bow off. And then I'll just go in with a sander and just kind of sand down the Hello Pumpkin just so it's not so bright. and It'll just cover up easier with the paint, and then I will paint that with the Waverly Chalk Paint in Hazelnut. And I do end up using the back side i think for the majority of my design so if you didn't really want to go through that whole process you didn't, wouldn't have to next i went to my computer and i printed off this little saying it says warm gingerbread wishes and i will link this down below so that you can download this if you'd like to use it um, and i'm going to use one of these little wood ornament cups from the dollar tree and i'm just marking where i want that to sit on my rolling pin so that I can line up my words um, in that space that's to the left of it. And I'll just use a little bit of washi tape to put that down and then I'm going to use some carbon paper. Now you guys know um, I like to try and show you projects that don't require a cutting machine. I do have a cutting machine and I use my cutting machine often. However, I do like to try and show you guys how you can do these projects and make them beautiful without vinyl and a cutting machine. So if you want to go that route, feel free. However, if you don't have a cutting machine and don't want to go that route, this is what you're going to do. You just trace over those words with that carbon paper shiny side down and it's going to transfer that right onto your rolling pin. Then you're going to just take a 
paintbrush and some watered down paint or a paint pen and you're just going to go right over the top of those marks and you've got yourself a beautiful sign and I just love to show you how you can do this without vinyl but if you want to use vinyl for this like I said before go for it I think that um, either way is perfect so I will just take my time and I will go over all of the areas there. Now for a little cup, I'm going to paint the bottom part in the hazelnut color, do the top white for some whipped cream and paint a little gingerbread face right onto our little cup here. And then I will paint that handle red and add some white polka dots. Super simple. And that little face is exactly like I showed you at the beginning of this video. Just that same teardrop shape for the eyes and an oval nose, round cheeks, and whatever you like for your mouth. And it's very easy. So after looking at this, I decided it needed something else that was just a little too plain. So I'm going to use some washi tape and I'm just going to mark off an area in between um, the end of the rolling pin and those words. And then I'm going to make it the same on both sides. And the one on the right side is going to get covered up a little bit by the cup, but that's okay. Um, I did want this to be even on both sides. So then once that was white, I added some more washi tape so that I could mark off the middle and paint that red. And I did use the Waverly chalk paint in crimson for this red color. I think that is one of my very favorite um, gingerbread colors to use. I usually use the hazelnut, the crimson, and white for most of my projects. And I'm just going to add some little polka dots down the middle of those stripes, add some polka dots onto the handle, polka dots onto my cu little cup here, and or onto the handle of my little cup, I should say. And then I'll just glue that little cup down where I marked it beforehand. And that completes this project. I think this is so cute. As an afterthought, I should have added some of the little faux peppermint candies onto the whipped cream of my little um, gingerbread man there, but I didn't think about that until just now. So here is a look at all of my decor together. I have been having so much fun throughout the years creating all of these gingerbread DIYs. You guys love them. I love them. It gives me such joy to see all of these projects in my home that I've created with my own two hands and I just love them and I want to thank you guys so much for loving them too. You guys have really um, just really loved the gingerbread stuff and I appreciate that you watch it and that you share these videos. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And as you can see here is my little shelf and you'll see so many of the projects that I've done throughout the years here. Here's my little tree with all of the ornaments that I've made, my little tea set and tear tray here. Um, and that's just the shelf from a distance. Here is a little display that I have with quite a few of those gingerbread creations, all of my primitive creations up there on that shelf, and then some more that I have in my kitchen. So I have created quite the gingerbread collection, but that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you have a happy, healthy, and blessed day. And until the next video, I will see you later. Bye.